Mullinger's Weekly Ramble. Hello, my friends. It is Wednesday, the 21st of August, and we are back with a second season of Mullinger's Weekly Ramble after a four-week break. I've genuinely missed you all. Um, I've been uh, travelling around uh, doing various family things, work things. Um, we took a four-week break because uh, I was away for a couple of weeks and uh, wonderful Reese Waters, our Welsh producer based in Halifax, was also away. So uh, we decided to take a, a break for four weeks from the show. I hope you haven't missed us too much. I wouldn't want you to be sad, but I hope you've missed us a little bit. And uh, now we're back. So I hope to entertain you over the next 45 minutes. That's wishful thinking. It's going to be a ramble. Lots to cover. However, um, we're here. I'm uh, I'm feeling good. Uh, my brain is feeling clear. Uh, this week I've been writing new material, uh, booking shows for next year, finishing chapters for my next book, swimming every day in the Kennebecasis River. Um, why have I been so productive? Well, after a couple of weeks off, uh, a couple of weeks family vacation time, I frankly needed a bit of a rest. I, I put on about just over £10, which, you know, that, that happens. So, you know, this week I'm uh, I'm all clean living off the darts, off the booze, uh, you know, trying to stay off the coffee to a bit, you know, down to, you know, five cups of fully caffeinated coffee a day. So we're doing well. Um, so what have you been up to? Let me know. Uh, we've got no, we've got a couple of questions this week, which are generally questions left over uh, from uh, the last podcast that I didn't get to. Uh, but please do send me a, uh, questions in for next week's podcast. Um, I got back um, on Sunday night. I say Sunday night. It was really, well, it was basically Monday morning, uh, from uh, BC. Uh, My family and I went out, family and I, is it right, family and me? I, yes, I, for my family and I, I got it right. So I always just think about my mum telling me off when I get that whole me and I thing wrong, which doesn't make sense. You know, why does anyone even care? Um, there's bigger things to worry about, isn't there? Well, maybe not. Maybe grammar, maybe maybe when like, when people stopped using grammar correctly and people like my mum would go, oh, the world, it's all gone to pot. Um, and, and maybe that's when everything did go to pot. Maybe it was a lack of, of, of grammar appreciation, a lack of, a lack of punctuation Naziness that led to the world being full of, well, actual Naziness. Who knows? I'm not. No, I don't think that's that's what brought about uh, evil in the world. I don't think it was. Um, anyway, point is this: uh, we went to BC last week. I obviously go over to BC a lot for for work, for for shows. Um, but it was my first time going over there with my family. Um, it was a, a idea. But the trip was an idea that my wife came up with. Really, it was. We were talking a lot recently about the fact that I obviously see my brother once a year. My younger brother, those of you that don't know, I have a younger brother, two years younger. His name's Nick. Uh, He's an engineer. He works for BC Power. He obviously also grew up in England. We we grew up together. Um, He, by some incredible coincidence, also married a Canadian. Um, Say coincidence. He's always copied me. Uh, He is married to a beautiful lady by the name of Jessie, who is a nurse uh, from Kelowna. They lived in London. uh, They lived in England for many, many years. But they live over there with one of their daughters, uh, Lily, and their older daughter, uh, Morgan, uh, lives actually in Market Harbour in England still. Um, she is uh, in her 20s now and you know, highly successful and loving life there, has a beautiful boyfriend named Charlie, uh, they, they a wonderful dog. They have a great, great life. Um, but what's my point? What's my point? My point is this. That I have two sons. My, my brother and I are extremely close in that we are uh, emotionally very close. We are share a almost identical outlook to life we're also very very different um i guess you know my kind of passions in life are you know you know essentially it's creativity which generally often means just sitting behind a desk oddly um and his he is all about the outdoors he is you know mountain biking dirt biking uh you know he, he's and he's got all the toys he's got all the toys he's got the the jet ski um you know not a day goes by without him going out and doing some monumental mission you know at the very least a kind of a 10k hike around the the beautiful Okanagan uh mountains hills valleys whatever they're called maybe they're called all three of those things um but really he he's very boisey so to, it, I, it, there was a dawning realization a couple of months ago when I was on the trampoline with my kids in our garden and I was FaceTiming with my brother. And it was just funny, like my, my kids, you know, they're 10 and 13, asking Uncle Nick all these questions. And we, we suddenly realized that we hadn't seen, the kids hadn't seen their Uncle Nick in six or seven years, which of course, you know, I mean, it happens with families, but it's also absolutely ridiculous and what a shame. So uh, Pam uh, came up with this plan that we would go for the for the for a week uh, in August as one of our summer vacations. Um, 
our other summer vacation was a drive to Kenny Bunkport in Maine uh, a few weeks ago, which I'll fill you on that as well, because that was also what's been going on since the last one. So last week we were in uh, BC in Vernon, which is where they live, and just basically had the absolute best time possible. Like it was as if every single day was full of dreams coming true from playing a mini golf, as you call it here, which is a rid- ridiculous name. It should be called crazy golf. Mini golf, I guess, does work when it's just the mini golf, which is the boring, like little patches of green where you're tapping it into a hole, same as normal boring golf. Crazy golf, to me, is the correct description. It's the British description for what is golf that involves lots of obstacles and, you know, dinosaur mouths and shooting it through a pirate's eyeball, coming out his butt, going up into a windmill. That's that's crazy golf. So we went to a place called Scandia, um, in Kelowna, where we played uh, crazy, uh, the most amazing, I would say the best crazy golf I've ever played. Although the kids do swear that the best crazy golf in the world is actually in Miramichi, where they went with uh, the amazing Will Blackmore, TV producer, um, who uh, was working on the sitcom Brit Out of Water. He, and he served as the Brit Out of Water's uh, child actor handler, which basically meant my 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 kids, whenever they weren't filming the scenes with, with myself or one of the other actors, they got to have a handler, which meant basically a playmate, where Will would take them to on an amazing... I mean, what an amazing thing. I still can't get over what an incredible experience that was. Well, weirdly, that was actually two years ago, right now. Right now, two years ago, we were filming Brit Out of Water in Miramichi. And, um, yeah, they, so basically they got to go and do all these excursions and have fun with Will. And one of the things was crazy golf. And the kids, we've done, we've done crazy golf all over the world, England, uh, all over Maine. And yeah, the kids say that the Mirror Machine one is the best ever. Anyway, last Monday we were at the uh, Scandia and we did go-karting. So much fun. Just a phenomenal week. It was a fascinating thing, uh, basically being in Vernon and in Kelowna on vacation. I've been there so many times for work, for either corporate gigs or for theatre shows or bar shows. Um, And always spend time or try and spend as much time as possible with my uh, brother and and my my sister-in-law and my niece. Um, but to be there completely relaxed, staying with them, uh, just an amazing time. My my niece Lily works at this place called Cambium Cider, which is which is actually beautiful cidery uh, in Vernon. We went there for, for actually lunch a couple of times, uh, just like kind of, you know, Yip Cider, just like, you know, beautiful people organizing, uh, running a, a beautiful cidery, really amazing cider. Also, has, you know, this incredible um, menu, gluten-free pizzas, just a joy. So basically every day we were out walking my, my brother's dogs, um, Bella and Noah. We were swimming in Cal Lake. Um, every single day we packed in, we did these these massive hikes in Cal Park, these these lookout trails. Uh, we went to the, the, there's a cafe called Rail Trail, Rail and Trails. Uh, we went there every day, swimming on the beach, like just absolutely. Oh, I mean, my brother and, and, his, and his wife married about 20 years ago. My wife and I married about 20 years ago due to being uh, young and poor at the time and also just extremely busy, all of us with our jobs and lives and, and just getting our careers started. We weren't actually able to attend each other's weddings. They got married in Kelowna. We got married in um, Toronto, which was kind of a middle point at the time. As we were living in London, it meant New Brunswickers and everyone could meet, you know, kind of in the middle, kind of not really. Anyway... Uh, it, 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 have your wedding somewhere a bit far out. Good way to chop off. Uh, yeah, good, 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 good way to keep the numbers low. <laughs> That's not why we did it. Anyway, we we got to go for lunch at the Grey Monk Vineyard one day, which was the vineyard where my brother and his uh, his wife got married. Anyway, oh my son Hunter, thirteen years old, got to go dirt biking. Like my like my brother, just an amazing teacher of this stuff. So the kids were either out tubing or uh, or dirt biking. Um, and in the evenings, we got to just kind of you know, sit in the garden, chill, catch up. Finally, got to meet my sister in law, my my uh, sister in law's um, sister and her family. Like it was just beautiful. And then we got, we would sit and watch classic movies. That like, I mean, it, most appropriately. I mean, like you know, when you're just going having a week where you just get to sit there and go, "This is what I dream about all the time." Me and my brother and my kids sitting there watching John Candy's The Great Outdoors. Um, a, a, a movie, interestingly, starring John Candy and Dan Aykroyd, two Canadians uh, are playing Americans, uh, about them, a brother and a brother-in-law, going away on vacation in Canada in the woods. I mean, it couldn't be more appropriate. And they get attacked by a bear. And we're interesting, the trails we were walking on were all trails where we had to look out for bears and indeed rattlesnakes. It's interesting going for a hike when you're simultaneously sweating, exhausted and shitting yourself. Um my brother's wonderful friends, Chris and Tanya, took us, t- took us out on their boat. Oh, another night on the final night, we sat and watched Police Academy 2, um, 
We also introduced them to our favourite rom-com of the last year, uh, Anyone But You. Um, but all of this is to say, uh, so I've just basically had the most phenomenal week uh, in BC. Um, interestingly, while I was away during last week, uh, a, a video that Tyler had edited about a, a joke that I do about Air Canada and how Canadians back will kind of support anything if it's Canadian. Like, you know, around the world, wherever we are, if it's Canadian, we kind of get behind it. I realise now, due to the thousands of angry comments, there are some exceptions to this. Um, some of them political, others, um, you know, we will get behind a, a, a football team that is cheating, even, <laughs> even, even if they're cheating. But were they cheating? Well, I guess they were cheating, but the players didn't know. And I'm, of course, referring to the Olympic scandal. So much has happened in the last few weeks. We've got a lot to cover. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep the keep it short. But uh, that's what she said. Um, th- my point is this: we will support anything as Canadians, and we, you know, that whole that whole. It was interesting because people, some people said that that whole drone scandal, spying Olympic soccer team scandal, was actually political, and that actually every team apparently was doing the droning. But for some reason, whichever newspaper it was, whichever newspaper decided to expose Canada, it was. Because they were a threat. I mean, this obviously there were so many political uh, things going on with the debates of the Olympics, and uh, I'm not going to go into the most controversial one of all because it was just an absolute shit show. But suffice to say, it all stems from you know possibly the lack of newspapers. Um, and there was the other weird thing being in BC or being in Vernon. It's a it's a town with a population of forty thousand people, right? Forty thousand, and yet in terms of the, what has been developed up, they have significantly more than places in New Brunswick with like three or four times that population. And I couldn't figure out why. I mean, and one of the caveats, I guess, to that, and I did realize, is that it, there might be only forty thousand people living there, but there's tons of kind of millionaire and billionaire Albertans there with summer homes, which is obviously. But you know, it's just interesting, kind of going along and seeing the number of kind of pubs and restaurants and bars on the water. And for some reason, you know, other than Lily Lake, we don't really have anything. Reeds Point Pub, obviously. But, um, you know, and who knows, by all accounts, by all accounts, everyone says it's impossible to make things happen here on the water um, because there's too much red tape or there's too many restrictions. I don't know what it is. Anyway, and by water, I mean, obviously, like, you know, anyway, I know there's stuff uptown as well. Um, oh, I guess St. John Marina. There we go. This is like that scene in Monty Python, isn't it? Well, other than what have the Romans ever done for us? <laughs> the, the list keeps going on. So my point is just, hey, yeah, I had a good week, but um, eating too much, drinking too much. So now this week, just got to come back, got to focus on work, catch up with everything. Um, and uh, I'm back to it tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, actually, Thursday night. Um, Thursday 22nd, Somerville Art Festival. I don't know how, how many people know about Somerville Art Festival. It's absolutely phenomenal. Um and no, it's just an initiative, but it's 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 a, essentially a national festival that is attracting artists from across the country to the uh, beautiful, historic, picturesque, but let's face it, uh, not very well known Somerville. Um, Somerville, as if you maybe you don't know, is on um, the Kingston Peninsula. That's right. So this is so the Kingston Peninsula. I, I always joke about. Oh, sorry, I, I skipped something there. I forgot to say about the fact that on our way back from Clone, it basically took us over twenty four hours to get home. Uh, we got to Clone Airport at midnight for, for our flight, and it was canceled, postponed by two hours, so we missed our connection. Air Canada, as usual, you know, didn't care, didn't really want to help. Um, we got stuck in Toronto for twelve hours. Then the flight got delayed, delayed again and again and again. And of course, they don't give you anything. They don't, you know. I've had it so many times, you know, they find a way around. I know it was weather related and everyone was affected, blah, blah, blah. But it was just quite ironic that we had all of these problems when last week, some of the videos that Tyler has been editing for me recently of recent stand-up shows at the Imperial or Yip or any other places, I have this joke about uh, Air Canada and how we'll support anything but the exception is Air Canada. That was all. That was a, just a joke. I mean, it's all about the time. It doesn't sound very funny, but I don't really want to... Uh, I didn't really want it to... You know, my plan wasn't to kind of shit all over Air Canada, frankly, because, you know, everyone's doing their best. And there's me trying to be all Canadian. Anyway, point being that this went absolutely... Um, Berserk in like a week, it's had something like a quarter of a million views on Instagram alone. Um, it's gone so far. Even Bell Mulrooney, Ben Mulrooney liked it this morning. So there was me checking in. To, well, checking in at, at YSJ was a bit, you know, 
I, I was thinking, yeah, because they can't have been in a smaller place. We all know each other. I do a lot of jokes about YSJ, obviously, in my act, all clearly done with absolute love and, and reverence um, for, for the airport. Everyone knows so much I love the airport. I mean, we, we joke about those we love. The people I joke about, the things I joke about most are the things I love the most. I joke about Sussex the most. I joke about the Kingston Peninsula. I joke about St. John Airport. I joke about my family. Um, the only thing I joke about a lot that I don't really like very much is me. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only and let's face it I take the piss out of myself more than anything else so um, clearly and I think the wonderful thing about Canadians is they really uh, do not tend to uh, take offence at things anyway my point is that it was just ironic that it took us over 24 hours to get home it was an absolute nightmare um, we, had, we had planned to be home the day before because it was my son River's uh, 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 11th birthday yesterday and we wanted to be back for it. And 11's a big age, you know, for, for birthdays. It means a lot to them and us. You know, time goes fast. Um, but anyway, Air Canada screwed it all up. We were all delayed, uh, whatever. But one pleasure thing. For, for 10 years, I've been making jokes about, you know, the ridiculousness of two places being called, you know, St. John and St. John's. And obviously, you know, uh, I mean, as you know, if you've seen my acts, you know, there, there are numerous instances. And to this day, I've been sent so many in the past couple of weeks. D- dozens and dozens and hun- hundreds and hundreds of instances of people going to St. John when they meant to go to St. John's and vice versa. It keeps happening. Um, I joke about this a lot. Similarly, Sydney, Nova Scotia, there is a desk at Sydney, Nova Scotia airport solely to deal with people who have basically had the, <laughs> the dream vacation ruined. I'm no, no disrespect to Sydney, Nova Scotia, but their dream vacation ruined by arriving at what they think is going to be. Oh, they've, they've worked their whole lives. They've saved up. They've retired. They uh, they they save up for their the dream trip of a lifetime. They enjoy, arrive in Sydney uh, for the for a week in the most be- for a month in the most beautiful uh, place in Australia, and they're in Sydney, Nova Scotia. And they come in, and as the as the sinking, dawning devastation and realization hits them, they they are greeted by someone at a desk who has to kind of try and win them over and go. Well, on the plus side, we have got a giant fiddle over there. We might not have beautiful sandy beaches and blah blah. blah. I'm sure they have got sandy beaches. Someone's going to write in. Just write and tell me. Um, anyway, so I've, there's a train going by. I don't know if you can hear that. Oh, there we go. The train going by on the Russell Road. I was lucky enough to drive, ride on one of those trains a few weeks ago. Anyway, uh, what I'm getting at is that uh, my realization being at Toronto Pearson is that on the listings board, Air Canada have now started listing the province next to it. So it says it doesn't say yeah you know, under does under Montreal it doesn't say QC or Quebec, but under Saint only under the confusing ones. So under London, Ontario, it's I don't know why I said it like that. London, it's London. London, Ontario, it says London, comma, O-N, Sydney, comma, N-S, St. John, N-B, St. John's, N-L. They've actually started doing it. So they are making somewhat of an effort because, again, my joke, and I have a, you know, you might probably see me do this routine, but my joke is, is that they're doing it on purpose. Like, think of the amount of money that Air Canada makes on people making these mistakes because you don't get a refund when you've flown to the wrong place because you're, you're a moron, even though you're not really a moron because it's not your fault. Uh, that places have identical names and no one's trying to correct you. And Google isn't, and Air Canada's website isn't kind of saying, are you sure you mean St. John, when clearly it could have that uh, feature, because even Ask Jeeves had that feature 25 bloody years ago, but they deliberately don't include that feature, despite the fact that every other single website, shopping shopping website what, what do you call it An online retailer <laughs> shopping website how old-fashioned does that sound you know, just like that www.amazon.com just like that um if you can but you can tell someone's age by how they read out you can tell someone's age actually by what email they've got like if they've got like the vanity email yeah you know, well the at icloud or at at james so i've got one of them um for business reasons, but I guess it is also a, a stupid vanity thing. I guess you can say, like, if someone's got the at iCloud, they're in their 20s. No, if someone's in their 20s, actually, now they don't even use email. I've had a few people message me or meet me and say, message me on Instagram and say, can I snap ya? Can I snap ya? And I guess that is referring to the, the Snapchat. And uh, I say, look, I don't use Snapchat, but, you know, email me here. And I've had a couple of people in their 20s reply to me with, OK, granddad, oh, OK, boomer. And like, oh, my God, email. I didn't realise anyone used email anymore. Jesus Christ. I mean, in my mind, email is still like absolutely brand new state of the art technology. Still can't believe I can sit here and write a letter on my laptop and that it will arrive in someone's inbox immediately or almost immediately afterwards. Almost immediately. Thanks to Google Gmail's brilliant feature of you can actually uh, within three 
seconds or five seconds actually a revert, stop the thing from going because you might quickly change your mind after writing an angry or loving or stalkery or um, a criminal email <laughs> to someone. So you can tell someone's age by the email they got, right? No email 20s or teens, but tw- maybe even 20s now. Like those people do not like, when you ask them to send you an email, they think it's like you've asked them to send you, them, you a fax or a carrier pigeon. Um, 30s, 30s would be Gmail, 40s, Yahoo, 50, if you're in your 50s, maybe you've got Hotmail, 60s, Simpatico, if you've got Simpatico, and then basically anyone that's got the old, you know, nb.nbtel.nb.nbtel.nbtel.nbtel.nbtel.nbtel.nbtel.nbtel.nbtel.nbtel.nbtel.nbtel.nbtel.nbtel.nbtel.nbtel.nbtel.nbtel.nbtel
and we're going to talk about my, my book, my life. My son, Hunter, will be there uh, selling copies of my book. I'll, of course, be signing them if you want that. He'll, we'll be doing um, subscriptions for the mag. But but anyway, point you don't have to come buy some. You know, yeah, that's not why I want you there. Uh, just come and hang out. And uh, and uh, so it's Thursday to August 22nd, 7 p.m. at the Somerville United Church, which is uh, 1891 Route 845. Yeah, that does sound like an address uh, from like Greek uh, Greek times. Um, if you're coming from Gondola Point Ferry, the church is about 15 kilometers. If you're taking Milledgeville, it's about four kilometers from the uh, ferry boat terminal. And by terminal, I obviously mean ramp. Um, anyway, so much going on. Art, uh, art uh, painting, sculpture, photography, fiber art, live music, food vendors. I should point out the amazing Dr. Andrew Clark, the uh, uh, magnificent local singer songwriter is going to be uh, warming up the crowd for me although if it's as hot as it's been it's going to be pretty bloody warm in there my god speaking of warmth apologies for anyone who was at the yip cider shows in the dome um the uh, insane heat in there was um uh dangerous frankly um and so thank you all for for sitting it out sticking it out and literally sticking it. we're all sticking to each other by the end basically if i mean the, the state of us all at the end of it, we could have had, we, we basically looked less exhausted and less wet than some people that had just finished an orgy in a sauna. And, and I, mean, I don't know, I mean, the, yeah, I couldn't see the audience. I, I didn't know what's going on. Some, some things, some of that could have been going on. Um, anyway, point being, <laughs> um, it was, uh, the Yip shows were a lot of fun. Thank you for coming. We did four of them. Most of the show at the Hampton Brewing Company, which I'll get to in a sec. But but thanks for coming. And again, it just it, it always blows my mind being at the Yip shows on the peninsula, middle of nowhere. You've got to get ferry boat, drive through very rural, very bumpy roads to get there. And as you know, every single time I do a show there, I text a mate who's playing the comedy store in London's Leicester Square, the UK's best comedy club, and ask how many people you got in. And they always reply going, oh, pretty good, James, 150 at the store, 150 at the store, you know, work your whole life to get in at the store, 150, maybe 200. And every time I'm able to go, guess how many we've got in a, in a dome, in a cidery, in the middle of bloody nowhere, 250 people, just amazing. Uh, and those shows were, again, I always say they're the highlight of my year, and they were. So um, all the videos that Tyler first on there um some of you would have been there would have seen my son hunter actually on stage roasting me it was a surprise that ethan and him sprung on me uh which was that um uh, so as i finished telling you about um somerville um i didn't i don't think anyway it's it's, it's tomorrow night 7 p.m somerville church it's only 10 bucks entry um it is 90 percent sold out i'm told there's plenty of perking at the charge to reserve your spot please e-transfer a payment at somervilleartfestival.com that doesn't sound right actually oh yeah maybe it is right payments at some of our festival.com anyway uh go to the, uh, follow some of our festival um online but um yeah come and see me but i mean i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna be there all night i should point out we're gonna do the we're gonna have the music i'll do the the the, the interview cindy will interview me i'll read extracts from the book i'll tell you some stories about writing the book i'll tell you some more about my new book that i'm um to completing it is all about um late in life ADHD diagnosis but crucially it is packed with stories um that I didn't have room for in the first book such as um everything from meeting Chris Rock um to um stalking Kate Winslet and um her I, I well becoming pen pals I should call it anyway tons going um so thanks to everyone that came to us. thanks to everyone who also came to our yard sale um, and it was so nice. Like some people came from the Ethan Yip shows, saw so many uh, uh, amazing um, friends. Um, Steph Pristine was there. Amazing uh, Steph. Wonderful, wonderful person. Wonderful photographer. She very, also very kindly came to my show at, at the Hampton Brewing Company. Um, my, my beautiful friends, Bev and Dan, were, that have been at two of the Yip shows. They also came come to numerous shows this year. Um, Bev also got me a gig doing a, a, a fundraiser for the... Um, uh, for the Christian uh, School Academy in um, St. Martin's, the Charlotte County Christian School. And uh, her husband, Dan, was convinced, having seen me, you know, a fair few times at Harbour Station at the Imperial, he was like, there is no way in hell that James has a church clean set. And uh, I, 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 I said, I'm sure you I do. I've done plenty of church gigs. And as a, you know... Um, I'm just, I'm a, I'm a flexible person. What can I tell you? And Bev was absolutely, was, was impressed and blown away, but able to report back to Dan that, yes, indeed, I do have a, it, it was all female, the, uh, the, the, um, the church gig. It was a, it was a ladies night out. It was absolutely wonderful. It was at the gorgeous Drew Haven 
in St. Andrews. And if you've been to Drew Haven, uh, Town and Country Club, oh my goodness, it is. I think it's called the Town and Country Club, but it's a cafe, restaurant, bar. Um, oh my God, the amazing Jeff Slater, the uh, St. Andrews mural artist and artist of, of all um, disciplines. Uh, painted it, created it, designed it inside. Just amazing Drew Haven. Anyway, I'm, a few tangents. Bev and Dan came to the yard sale with their son, Ryan, um, who I was meeting for the first time, but we have lots of mutual friends, not least uh, my son, River, because uh, Ryan used to date the sister of one of River's best friends from school, if I'm getting this right. One degree of separation between all of us. Anyway, Bev and Dan said they're going to bring Ryan for his uh, for his birthday party to, yeah, for his 19th birthday party. So they, they came a few weeks later to one of the August shows, um, did a shout out for Ryan. It was his big, it was his big 19th birthday, uh, big night out. Um, first time being able to order a drink legally. And at the start of the show, I wished him happy birthday from the stage and mistakenly said 18 rather than 19, because that's the drinking age in England. I forget that for some ridiculous reason, you can join the army, kill someone, get married, um, drive a car, buy a gun in Canada at 18, but you can't uh, buy a can of uh, of, of moose light or, 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 or slim line yip cider. Um, anyway, so I said, yeah, happy 18th birthday to Ryan from the stage, at which point he went up to the bar to get himself a drink to celebrate. And uh, the bar staff, who understandably had heard what I'd said, uh, instantly cut him off due to the fact he was underage, which was absolutely the right thing to do because the law is the law. Uh, so I inadvertently ruined uh, Ryan's uh, 19th birthday by accidentally giving the wrong... Uh, birthday. So anyway, happy 19th birthday, Ryan. And if you are listening uh, to this and uh, Bev and Dan's uh, amazing uh, son, Ryan, uh, turns up at your establishment wearing a red fez. Uh, that's what he bought for me at the yard sale, an old Tommy Cooper red fez that uh, he kindly asked me to sign. Ryan, not Tommy Cooper, obviously. Uh, what's Tommy Cooper's catchphrase? Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. Um, that's reference just for the Brits listening. That's one of you, Tim Andrews. Uh, no one else will understand that. Anyway, so... Um, that was the last couple of weeks. Uh, what did I do? So, yeah. So, last month, I went to Kenny Bumpot for a week. Uh, it's one of my very, very, very favourite places. Once stayed there on a drive back from Boston when the kids were very young. We were driving back from going to, like, uh, that, that Legoland. And then there's also, like, a theme park in Boston that has Thomas the Tank Engine. And on the way back, we decided impulsively to spend a night at the um, Port Inn. I just Googled, like, cheap motels in, in Kenny Bumpot. Say this Port mot- Port Inn. Fell in love with it. Um, and we've been there a few times since, but actually haven't been since COVID. So I haven't been in five years, but we decided to, you know, get out. And as you know, I'm a very, very loyal Atlantic Canadian, but crucially a loyal uh, New Brunswicker. Always, always, always just vacation, vacation in New Brunswick. I'm here, you know, 90% of the year. New Brunswick's always my priority, but I love Kenny Bunkport for many, many reasons. Um, it is also nice to get away. You know, this province is, uh, it's a wonderful thing, the fact that we all know everyone, but it's also a wonderful uh, thing to go to a place now and again where you don't know anyone. Um, and you're not going to bump into people that you know. So, not that we want to misbehave. Anyway, you get my drift. You get, you, you get my gist? You get the gist of my drift. You get my drift. You get my drift and you get the gist of my drift. So, we drive to Kenny Bunkport, set this port in. I mean, again, and crucially, I mean, this is a very interesting point. Uh, even with the American dollar, and the conversion rate, this motel, which is a very, very nice motel, um, but it's priced like a motel. I mean, it's still a motel, and, you know, but um, it's, you know, nice and it's clean. And it's well looked after and the rooms are nice. It's ish. But it's a lot cheap. It's about half the price of any hotel that we looked at in uh, New Brunswick. So just one of those things which I point out not to be critical, but I point out because uh, one of the frustrations or difficulties we all have in New Brunswick is, you know, we're trying to compete with a place like Kenny Bunkport, which is just the most gorgeous town, has every, has, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of world-class restaurants, bars, dozens of restaurants on the water. They've got nothing that we don't have. In terms of, uh, you know, geographically and, and, and weather and and beauty and, and scenicness, they have nothing that we don't have in New Brunswick. The only thing they have, obviously, is, you know, influx of, of population. They have, um, I guess, proximity to... But then we, again, we're the same. We have proximity to big places. But basically, it's just developed there. It, it, it's so developed. And they have the infrastructure and they have everything set and nailed and done. And I guess part of why I go there often is I'm fascinated in studying what is done in places like that and how could it be done here. Similarly, Vernon. 
seeing in Vernon how that place is so developed. You know, example being at the Renforth Wharf. Why there's this huge kind of empty building right there? Why isn't that building? Uh, a restaurant or uh, at least a diner or a place to get ice creams. I mean, my, you know, my recommendation would be some kind of beach pub. But again, as I understand it, and I don't want to say this, everyone always says, oh, no, you can't do that. And that is a classic New Brunswick thing. Was, oh, you can't do that. No, they, they, you know, no one would let you turn turn the Rosse Yacht Club into a into a restaurant. No one wants that. They don't want that. It's like, well, who's they? And who, you know, it would be interesting to go through the process of finding out who is this they that doesn't want anything to happen? I don't know who the they is. Um, and by they, I'm, I'm not, you know what I'm talking about. I, I, I'm not talking about that. That's not, I'm not talking about the, the, the they. That's a separate, that's a separate thing. <laughs> that's what I'm actually trying to please everyone on the time. I'm saying they as in the, the people. So anyway, Bev and Dan had recommended, why are we in the Kenny Bunkport, that we go to this place I'd never heard of in Sacco, Maine, called uh, Splashtown Funtown. Oh, my word. Literally, as River said, best day ever. Uh, it was an amusement park and water park in Sacco that is it's both in one. So it's basically a theme park, like a, like an um, amusement, like a roller coaster theme park with every possible great ride you could want. Plus, right next to it, a... Um, a uh, massive water slide, like extravaganza, like like tornado water slides. Some water slides so terrifying I couldn't even do them. Um, it, it famously has a northern New England's tallest and longest wooden roller coaster. That's quite a few caveats there. Northern New England's tallest and longest wooden roller coaster called Excalibur. It is terrifying. This ricket, it, this thing screams the movie Final Destination. Absolutely. Um, it has the longest and tallest log flume. We did that numerous times called Thunder Falls. I mean, I'm super scared of heights. So, uh, but the log flume I can just about cope with. I shit myself doing Excalibur. My kids actually did it twice and then felt a bit sick. This wooden jitter. Well, I mean, obviously, I'm not saying it's not safe. Don't come after me. The lawyers for Splash and Pantone, but it is shaky, jiggly. It's terrifying. Um, we did so much stuff while we were there, like just, you know, we, we went to all of our, all of our favorite uh, beaches in, in Kenny Bunkport. Um, so many gorgeous beaches there, Goose Rocks Beach, um, uh, what else? Oh, Parsons Beach. We went on the final morning at 5 a.m. to watch the, to watch the sunrise. Um, Mother's Beach, Cape Porpoise. I mean, it was just, it was this cafe actually called Cape Porpoise Kitchen. Absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, wonderful week. Uh, oh, we did more go, go karting and we did the crazy golf, did a couple, did, um, Raptor Falls, which is dinosaur crazy golf, absolutely epic. Anyway, um, in between the those two uh, trips, I've been had actually had numerous meetings about some very exciting TV projects for next year. Um, working with some people that I've admired for a very very long time, um, and we're developing something. Anyway, uh, one of those things, stupid things, we're not to talk about. It, I should be able to because let's face it, and hardly anyone listening to this. Just just a few of yeah, my cl- close friends and family, but. Um, I'll be able to reveal more soon. I, I, I'm really, I mean, I'm sure I probably can talk. I just don't want to talk about it until it's all uh, confirmed. Um, and uh, and the book is coming on nicely. Uh, again, as you know, I get very distracted by things. My ADHD means that I'm constantly doing 50 things at once. And the unfortunate side effect of that is, is often only a handful of things get done properly. But um, I am focusing quite heavily on the book. We've had lots of evenings Swimming at the Cuplex again. How amazing to have this have the Cuplex so that people in the whole kind of Greater Saint John area can can come and visit. And every there's free shows in the evening. Um, the show we did at Hampton Brewing Company was phenomenal fun. Um, uh, Mike Keynes had reached out. One of the owners of Hampton Brewing Company had reached out a few times, saying we should we should come and do, you should come and do a show. He kept following up with me for about three years. Kept um, and God bless him and thank God. I mean, partly with these things, I, I'm 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 always not nervous, but I kind of, I mean, especially in the area, I'm always, as I've mentioned before, try and do as little as possible within Saint, within the, the area, because you don't want to oversaturate it. You don't want people to get sick of you. Um, although as you'll hear later, that doesn't always work. Um, but basically Mike and Simon Chiswell, Mike Kane, Simon Chiswell, and I believe one other friend, uh, Joe, I believe it is, um, uh, founded Hampton Brewing Company. They're, they're just, you know, life, they're school friends. I believe we're all the same age. Uh, they started doing homebrew in 2012, as everyone does in, <laughs> in New um, But they basically, Hampton Brewing was incorporated in December 2018 and they um, opened in, in, in summer of 2020, difficult time to be doing anything, uh, the Tap Room Brewery, gorgeous place for a gig. I'm going to be answering another show there uh, next month. 
It was uh, an absolute blast. And um, yeah, I, it took two weeks, three years for the show to happen, but I'm so, so glad it is. Um, what else have we got on the air? Uh, oh, actually, one, two weeks back, we had the kids, Pam and I had the kids in overnight camps for a week. Hunter was at a camp and River was at the Snyder Ranch camp near Sussex having a whale of a time. So New Brunswick Day, Pam and I kayaked over to Long Island where incidentally, oh my God, I haven't told you this. You might have seen this story online or at a show. Um, I can't remember the case name. Captain Skip, Captain Skip, what was his name? Skip. Anyway, whatever his name is. So here's the deal. A couple of weeks ago, when we were in Kenny Bunkport, Ethan Ash, amazing Ethan Ash, who was obviously here for a few weeks doing those shows with me at Hampton and Yip. Ethan says to me, can me and my buddy Ryan borrow your kayaks? And I say, no problem. So Ethan uh, takes the kayaks out uh, on the Kennebec Cases River and they decide to kayak over to Long Island. Being uh, absolute morons, they get to, <laughs> I mean that in the nicest way, they get to uh, Long Island, which is opposite basically the Rosso Road. Um, they realise they've come out with any out any water on one of the hottest days of the year. Idiots. So um, all they've got with them is, is four beers and two codeines. And, and codeine not because... Um, not because of the drug addicts, because Ethan has struggled his entire life, or certainly for most of his adult life, with an absolutely crippling back pain. And it doesn't stop him doing gigs, though, because, you know, he's still, even even over the summer, the back pain got to absolute unbearable levels. But unlike some 41 and area 5 or 6, he didn't, he didn't pull out. He didn't pull out, so to speak. Oi, oi. Um, <laughs> he didn't pull out. He went ahead with it. Um, not dissing... Um, yeah, five or six, this thing, some 41 for pulling out. Um, but um, c- c- kudos to the beaches, by the way, for stepping in at short notice. And it was weird when that happened and some people were online kind of slagging off the beaches going, seen them before and they're not some 41. It's like, well, no, they're not. But they've kindly stepped in to save our city's festival. And then I opened the Globe and Mail on uh, the weekend because I was... Um, not in Atlantic Canada and actually able to get my hands on a fucking newspaper. That was a weird one. Being in Vernon grocery stores on Save On Foods, which is like their sobies, and a whole rack of newspapers, the blunt, wonderful uh, local newspaper, which was called uh, Morning Star, or the, yeah, the Morning Star, um, Global Mail, National Post, Vancouver Sun, um, plus even uh, the British Express newspaper. Yeah, I know. It, 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 population of 40,000 there. They've got all the newspapers. We saw it, none of it. Anyway, how was I getting onto this? Oh, yes. Uh, oh, yes. So I opened the Global Mail at the weekend and there's a massive double page spread on this photographer who is uh, basically famous for the fact that she has photographed the globally renowned, respected band, The Beaches. And I'm thinking, oh, all these idiots slagging off The Beaches when uh, when... They're so big that a photographer is becoming famous just for photographing them. And then you look at who the beaches uh, beaches have opened for, like Rolling Stones. Anyway, Ethan's not a drug addict. He just needs coding for his back. So they get over there. They see a boat. So Skip Rogerson, that's the geezer's name. They And by geezer, I'm using British terminology. Google it. In England, geezer just means guy, mate, lad. In England, it's what I call my friends and have done since we were 10. All right, guys, that obviously the other thing British men call each other is um, the C word, uh, which I know here is highly offensive, um, uh, 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 considered highly misogynistic in England. Uh, not so. It's a term of endearment. Anyway, uh, clearly this is going on a bit of a ramble here. I'm going to wrap this up very soon, I promise. Ethan and Ryan are on Long Island with no water. So they go over to a boat and they say, excuse me, really sorry, but can we buy some water from you? We've come out. We're idiots. I'm from England, thus an idiot. And... Uh, we need some water, otherwise we have to dehydrate. So uh, Skip Rogerson and his friends invite uh, Ethan and Ryan onto their boat, and uh, and say, "Would you like a would you like a, a vodka?" They pour him a vodka, they him a vodka orange. Uh, they drink, they drink it. Uh, in classic New Brunswick fashion, Skip Rogerson and his friends' family uh, on the boat take Ethan and Ryan on the biggest day out ever they took them to crystal beach grand bay all around the St. river system give them the greatest tour of what i believe to be one of the most beautiful river systems in the world get them absolutely steaming paralytic drunk and only eight hours later as ethan and ryan are being put back onto i think it's fair to, i think i think you're allowed to kayak drunk i don't think that's illegal um so I don't think I'm telling anyone, anyone off here. But as Ethan and Ryan get back uh, onto... Let's just pretend they didn't get back on the kayaks. Let's just say that they took the kayaks back. Um, as they get back, uh, after eight hours of, of heavy drinking, uh, absolutely paralytic, uh, they suddenly realise and remember that they actually forgot to ever have that glass of water they needed so badly. <laughs> oh, absolutely classic. I love everything about that, that two people in need 
Um, and then, so anyway, point being, two people in need, uh, go for help. And then these wonderful New Brunswickers, Maritimers, take them out on the greatest boat tour in the world, um, get them absolutely steaming drunk, um, kindly take them back. Um, obviously, I should point out, Skip Morrison, who is kindly um, hosting this, obviously is not drinking because he is driving the boat. I should add that as a comment. Anyway, they drop them back. Uh, Ethan, you know, I, Ethan leaves my kayaks where they were. They put my life jackets away. Um, and I tell this story on stage at Yip. Um, turns out, and I think I possibly knew this already, that Skip and his friends were in the room. Um, so obviously that was an amazing moment. And then when Ethan went up, um, actually Skip wasn't in the room when I told the story, um, but his friends were. And then, um, and I think we'll put this story out there. I think I already have. It might be on my Instagram. And the old big bop, lick lock, dick dock. I need to burp, I'm sorry. I'm, I'll come away from the mic. <sighs> Pardon me. Sorry, we don't edit. So um, I, I've got to go and pick up River from kayaking camp shortly. Kayaking camp, ironically. I wonder if they're teaching them how to kayak after a lead to a vodka. Probably not, probably not. Um, so I'm telling this story. And then and late Ethan, as I'm introducing Ethan, then Ethan comes on stage. And um, and then he notices Skip come in. He goes, Skip Rogerson's in the building. And the whole crowd goes wild. And then Skip comes on stage and gives Ethan a vintage guitar signed by everyone on that boat. Tell me that is not the most beautifully New Brunswick thing ever. Um, anyway, all of that was in brackets for me to say on New Brunswick Day, my wife and I had no kids here. So we we kayaked over to Long Island and there was a, like a deck there. Like a, like a, is it called a deck? Like a poking out boat deck, boat deck, boat, well, that thing that sticks out that people tie their boats to. And we sat there and there's a, there's a dome there, like a mini yip dome. So I took a picture of it and sent it to Ethan going, oh, look, I found our next venue for next summer. And he writes back and goes, oh, holy shit, what are you doing there? Blah, 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 blah. Turns out that that spot where me and Pam happened to be sat eating our gluten-free sandwiches and having a little glass of winey, winey, wino, wino, vino, was actually Skip Rogerson's camp. I know. So uh, what would it be the next day? No kids. We just basically lived. Oh, but next day we actually biked to, so it starts to bike to a destination. I love biking. Um, and... Although normally I have a mountain bike. My wife went to buy me a hybrid bike for Father's Day last year. Got talked into buying me a mountain bike by someone who basically clearly thought that I'd be doing a lot more mountain biking, which I, I, I basically just rode bikes. So I've got this really heavy bike. So it's a major cardio operation for me to bike anywhere, to bike in this heavy thing, these big wheels. I'm basically, basically every time I bike anywhere, I'm basically doing a spin class. Um, including all the moves as I'm trying to get up a hill. Anyway, we biked to the Lily Lake Pavilion. You know, massive fan of lilies, massive fan of Rockwood Park. Um, don't know if you know this, Rockwood Park designed by one of the same architects that designed New York Central Park. Fact, and that's why it's so beautiful. Um, so we biked to Lily Lake, so I kind of have a lobster roll and a pint of uh, fine company Radler. And speaking of Radler, my brother's favourite drink right now in BC is Moosehead Radler. And he's like, he says he can't, he, he can get it in a lot of places, but not everywhere. And he says it's the best drink in the world. And I just think it's a beautiful thing. I know we all, some people over here drink the Okanagan, is it Okanagan Spring or Okanagan um, drinks. How beautiful that Moosehead, St. John's Island, I know it's globally drank and it's popular everywhere and we see it in lots of movies and it's popular in America. I know that. I know it's popular everywhere, but it was nice to see my brother and his mates all absolutely worshipping this. And my brother is now going to come and visit us in uh, New Brunswick, possibly. They've never been to Atlantic Canada, any of them. Not ne next year, year after. And their sole request is, please, 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 can we go to Moosehead Breweries? And please, and I said I live in the same town as the, as the owners and the CEO. And basically, my, my, my brother's dream is to be able to shake the hand of Andrew Oland, the creator of the greatest drink ever. Um, Andrew, it could have been one of the other uh, family members that uh, created the drink. Uh, but um, anyway, hats off to, to them. And so, uh, yeah, I went there to have... Um, Lobster oil. Biking to Lily Lake from uh, Rosso ain't easy. So you because you can get along. It, I mean, it's a bit di dicey on the Rosso Road leading to Rosso Avenue. You can do it though, but it's when you get to the other bit where you basically need to get from the end of Rosso Avenue up. So you're going around that roundabout at the bottom of Waterloo Street, and then you're going over that bridge. That is hair racing on a bike. Um, and it seems a shame that we don't have more bike trails, if I may be critical. Like, you know, it solves it, you know, tourism. Uh, I mean, yeah, people are constantly saying that they want more of us people to come into St. John. Uh, you know, I don't, you know, I, I you know, not everyone can afford a, a, a taxi all the time. And also I like, I like a bit of exercise. Biking trails, more biking trails, get people, kind of like what they've done in Fredericton and Moncton and indeed pretty much every other place in the world. Um, where, so you can bike to places and it, it solves so many things. It solves, you know, people say they want, they want people to be healthier uh, and be less of a strain on the, on the, um, 
on the on the on the health service. So maybe we're all healthier as we cycle to <laughs> drink and eat lobster rolls <laughs> dripping in butter. I don't know. Maybe I haven't thought this theory through. Um, uh, I haven't watched much lately. This is quite rare for me. I haven't watched much. Obviously, on the on the plane, I watched Wonka. I started to watch uh, something. Oh, I started to watch Creed three, which that did seem to be bloody good actually. Um, of in um, I mentioned we watched Anyone But You in um, BC. I introduced that to my my sister in law loves Glenn. What's his name? Glenn, the, the sexy Glenn, sexy Glenn that's in everything. Uh, oi oi, uh, sexy Glenn who was in Top Gun. Glenn Powell, that's his name. I kept calling him Glenn Campbell for a while. That's a country singer, isn't it? Um, but one thing I did watch, so we watched a, a Jack, Jake Gyllenhaal in Presumed Innocent on Apple. Surprisingly good, actually, for one of those kind of like, you know, yeah, courtroom, did he do it, didn't he do it? Well, I'd say it was quite good. It was it, it was addictive. We watched it. You know, when you're having those, you know, those weeks when you're trying to, you know, you're staying off the bows and you're trying to not, not eat peanuts all night or dig into the chips and the candies and all that. It's a good one to get in bed and watch with a nice cup of mint tea when you want a little bit of a detox. And um, and it was good in that it had an ending, unlike almost any other really bloody show. That's what I hate about shows nowadays. Anyway, um, also when to see It Ends With Us by the film of Colleen Hoover's book. Colleen Hoover or Hover? Anyway, obviously uh, lots of people talking about this. Um, I, I didn't know what the book was about or really what the film was about. Found it absolutely devastating. Was really sucker punched by what, I, what was played out as a twist. Um, um, and I did do a post on social actually saying how good it was not knowing anything and how it really affected me. And I said, go in not knowing anything. And someone, fair enough, commented saying, you know, that's a bad, this is a bad take. But due to the subject matter of the film, Burke, to tell people to go in without knowing anything, it could be triggering for people, which, I mean, I do understand given the subject matter. Um, but then, is, I mean, I guess everything's triggering. Like, if, 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 we, if, we, if we've all been affected by different things. But that said, the way this, it, it's very disturbing. Um, while also being simultaneously a, a beautiful love story. And and I read Colleen Hoover's um, All Your Perfects while on vacation in BC last week, and it started off thinking, oh, my God, this is a bit. And absolutely fell in love with it. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, so I, I'm, I'm now a, a who... I can't watch what her fans are called. Hooverites, Hoovers, Cole Hoes. Uh, no, that sounds terrible. Um, cool Hoes, that'd be a good one. Cool Hoes, anyway. Um, absolutely loved it. And... Um, um, so yeah, I'm going to be pl- plowing through Colleen. Well, I'll do more Colleen. Once I know how to pronounce Colleen Hoover's name, I'll do more. Um, we've got two questions left over. Um, Sean and Jennifer Mooney, thank you so much, by the way, for coming to see me in at the Yip shows. I know you're doing shows in BC. Will you be visiting Victoria? Um, have you seen the show Under the Bridge? It's able to be streamed and takes place in Victoria in the early 90s. I will do. Weirdly, you say that, I met, um, uh, while we were in Toronto on, on the way to BC, we went to see our dear friends, Dar and Eddie, and their son, um, Lucas's girlfriend was there and her parents live on on Vancouver Island. And um, and she said, you know, you should go to shows. And I'm like, oh my God, that's the one place everyone is always telling me to do shows. And I keep, I've had like more mess. I've had about literally more than half a dozen messages in the last few weeks saying, when will you come to BC? So I promise I'm going to make it happen. Um, that's basically one of my resolutions for 2025 is perform in Vancouver Island. Um uh, we got one from Steve. Uh, Ola from Pedrus and James have two tickets to see you at the Playhouse. Looking forward to it. My one of my my first of your concerts was at the Delta a few years ago. I kept an eye on your tune up shows out on the peninsula, but have yet to make the drive down. I'm on episode two of your weekly ramble and enjoy it mentally so far. Thumbs up. Well, thanks very much, mate. You got uh, eighteen more to go. But I guess you sent this a couple of weeks ago. See you in Freddie Beach, and again, I enjoy listening to the ramble. Well, thank you, Steve. UNB. Uh, Steve works at UNB. Um, uh, thank you, mate. I can't wait to meet you. Um, let me know if you and your Wonderful family attending, celebrating anything, and I'll obviously do a shout out. Okay, I've got to pick up River, but I'm going to end by reading you this. Crystal Lee Dion, uh, dear, wonderful Crystal Lee, she uh, and I were in the uh, Bell series, now movie, The Ugwag, together about the St. John Sea Monster. She was my long suffering assistant in it. I was an evil British. CEO bastard type. Uh, we never appear on the screen together because budgets and schedules. Uh, but we were basically had phone conversations together when we met. Anyway, uh, her, her, she came with her lovely daughter and a lovely friend Angela, who often appears on this podcast. Anyway, Crystal Lee just sent me uh, this email about five minutes before I started recording. Uh, and I thought I'd read it to you all. Um, 
I know you enjoy funny little anecdotes, so I've got a good one for you. My ex-husband drives double-decker buses for the cruise ships. My father-in-law used to do that, actually. Wonderful. When I, my, that was really my job, actually. My plan for, for work when I, we moved here was to actually do um, do the um, like the tour bus talking. Anyway, that's different. Sorry. Um, that was me talking. Back to her um, message. Um, so her ex-husband drives double decker bus for the cruise ships. He had to bring a bus down from Moncton yesterday and broke down at Haymarket Square, where the bowling alley used to be, lol. And there was a film crew setting up there. While my ex was waiting for a tow truck, he went over to find out what they were doing. The head guy told him they were filming a movie for Bell TV called Car Wash Wars. So my ex said, oh, friends of mine have a show on Bell TV called Ugwug. The guy says, oh, I've heard of that. Isn't that James Mullinger guy in it? My ex goes, yeah. Yes, he is. The guy then says, and I quote, I don't like him at all. You know he's on crack. <laughs> That's why he acts the way he does. I don't want to support that crackhead. Thought you might get a chuckle out of that. Still love, still love you, though, even though you're a crackhead. L-M-F-A-O. Um, well, thank you for sharing that, Krista. Um, I'm sorry your uh, ex-husband um, had to hear that. I hope you, I'm sorry he had to learn that I'm a crackhead. Um, interesting. Well, all I can say is, um, and again, um, he says it's the head guy. I, I don't think anyone that's the head guy on any production would talk like that about people, but maybe they would. I don't know. I hear a lot of uh, shit being talked about me. Um, anyway, how lovely is that? Uh, so there you go. I'm a crackhead. And uh, the reason uh, I'm the way I am is because I'm on crack all the time. So wonderful. Um, I hope anyone listening to that doesn't think for one second that you can actually be this productive <laughs> on crack and actually... Um, it takes uh, either super channeling um, uh, ADHD or um, or just you know working hard. Anyway, uh, so I, I good luck to anyone out there who is finding themselves to be productive on crack. Uh, thank you for uh, total strangers who uh, I've never met um, slagging me off to people they haven't met before. And um, and God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful uh, couple of weeks. A couple of weeks? No, it's weekly ramble, isn't it? It's weekly ramble. I'll be back next week. There we go. That must be the crack talking again. Mullinger's weekly crackhead ramble. That's what we're going to call it from now on. Um, thanks for listening, everyone. Uh, send me your questions. Um, please do come and see me at some of our art festival uh, tomorrow night. Um, and uh, what other show can I plug while I'm here? Um, well, next month, I'm at the uh, Kingsbury Amphitheatre on Saturday, the 14th of September, doing the St. Andrew's Comedy Festival uh, on stage with the legendary Ron James. Um, oh, sorry, I just knocked over um, a piece of paper. Weirdly, I just knocked over my calendar, uh, which is a St. Andrew's calendar, which has a picture that Tyler took of me on stage on that very amphitheatre. Anyway, no, I really am rambling. I'm going to go. Um, keep... Um, uh, keep listening. Send me your questions, please, 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 to comedy at jamesmollinger.com. As, as I said before, I will answer absolutely anything. And uh, uh, stay off the crack, ki uh, kids, because uh, crack kills or indeed uh, makes you uh, create very rambly podcasts. <laughs> and uh, good luck to everyone um, on that show. I'm sure it's a wonderful show, um, despite, um, yeah, people saying I'm on crack and that. I, what is it? I don't like him. Funny thing to say. I would never say I don't like anyone. I guess I don't like Donald Trump. But anyway, that's a separate story. Thanks very much. Um, lots of love to you all. And uh, see you next week. This has been Manager's Weekly Ramble, and it's season two. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. But if you didn't, let me know. Cheers. Bye. Manager's Weekly Ramble.